What's up guys? I am driving to Walmart right now to do a first experience video of Amazon FBA. So this I believe is the side hustle that will be the most useful to many of my email subscribers who have been writing in who want to make money on the side as a side hustle or to start some type of digital business of some sort and basically make money. And I have written about, I will write a extensive blog post uh, on my blog about why a bunch of the other things out there like affiliate marketing and you know selling ebooks, they're a lot harder and they take a lot longer to make any money if you can't even make money from it. It's not nearly as easy as all those other videos and articles make you believe. Trust me, I've kind of experienced it firsthand. I've been uh, trying those things out for a while now, and it just is not as simple as it seems. Uh, so more on that later, but this video is uh, also requested. You guys wanted to see me kind of record myself doing a side hustle for you guys to kind of show you along the process. And I think the first big thing, the first big tip I have for you is a tip against procrastinating. So I procrastinated against doing this for a while because, well, it seemed like a bit of a hassle. But at the same time, I knew that Amazon FBA is probably one of the quickest, easiest ways to start making some money. Um, and I knew it would be helpful to you. So I had to do it. So what I did was I chunked. I, I reduced it to something that wasn't as intimidating and I began there. So I told myself, okay, maybe it's a hassle for you to record and go out all this way and do this stuff. So instead, I just want you to show up at Walmart one day and then scan a few items and see if anything actually like fits your criteria. So I did that. I didn't record anything and I, I did that and I got you know some good uh, good information. Today, I'm actually going to go back to the Walmart I was at before and actually purchase the one, th one thing I found there that actually th met the uh, criteria. So, uh, I'm pretty excited. We are about to get to the Walmart and it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be fun. So, if you're not familiar with Amazon FBA, I haven't tried it out ever, but based on all my research, I truly believe that this is 10 times if not 100 times faster in actually ramping up and making any money and it's not super complicated at all so the basis behind it is that people don't live near walmarts and targets and home depots uh, like you do so they are willing to wait pay a premium uh, by buying the same product off amazon or maybe they're just lazy and rich and they would rather have that product shipped straight to their doorstep rather than having to go to Walmart physically and then look for it and then buy it. So what you're doing is basically arbitrage. You're buying something on clearance for cheap. Um, usually it's stuff like uh, board games like Monopoly. And then you're going, you're pretty much shipping them to Amazon, paying the shipping fees, packaging them up. Uh, and then once someone buys it off Amazon, you get a profit on whatever it, you know whatever it cost so it's actually pretty simple by nature and there's really only three main steps one is to find the product two is to scan it and make sure you're getting that return on investment and then three is to um, ship it to amazon and then hope someone buys it uh, and so here we are and uh, you can't see the Walmart yet. You just see a bunch of cars. Uh, but we are going to get at it. Uh, I'm literally like 20 feet away from Walmart. And uh, one thing I don't like about this uh, whole process for anyone who's like interested in uh, like reading articles about Amazon FBA to really kind of do your research before you start so you know your numbers and the math. The math is very basic by the way. One thing I don't like about it is they make it seem so simple at first and then they give you this like massive 10,000 word beginner guide article that goes into just way too much detail on this stuff. And I have to kind of like sift through it and just find like the quick tips, the re really the, the instructions that I need. And that's really annoying because it's like, it overwhelms me. It's like 
it intimidates me from even starting with this massive article. And I know why they do it. It's search engine optimization. I know that they, they write these store articles to get more keywords and supposedly it helps you rank higher, but I think it backfires because Google's main goal is to help the user. And no user is gonna sit through a 10,000 word article on how to get started on Amazon FBA with all these needless details on, uh, on uh, articles to begin with. So, uh, let me just give you a picture of the Walmart. There's the Walmart right there. And now we are going to go ahead and park and we will get to work. It's actually very simple. I think there's a few things that people don't understand about Amazon FBA in terms of how easy it is. So um, it's not super easy. It's not like you just show up there, you just pick a few products on clearance and they all just magically fit into the criterion that you're looking for. Instead, the problem usually is that uh, you have to do a bit of digging. You have to find a product that is on clearance and cheap enough and eligible for Amazon FBA. There's um, a scanning app I use. Uh, it's a free one, Amazon FBA, uh, Amazon seller app is what it's called. And then you have to put it in there and then see if it's eligible for uh, FBA. Then you have to make sure it has a high, a low enough sales rank under 250,000. Um, and then it has to have a good return on investment. Basically, you have to be able to sell it for a lot more than you make it for. So I'll go through the math. It's actually very simple, but basically I'm saying that it's not like super, super quick. You have to do some digging. Um, so, Anyhow, here we are, here we are. The Walmart is right in front of us. I've gone ahead and parked my car. Oh, I forgot my wallet. Um, the other problem with this Walmart is that I thought there'd be this one giant clearance aisle where like all the clearance stuff is bucketed. I talked to a sales associate. Guess what I found out? They don't have clearance. Instead, if you're lucky, at the end of aisles for different departments, they may have sometimes have some items that are on sale. So unfortunately, at least for this Walmart, for some reason there's no actual like big clearance or sales section where I can just like go through all of them quickly. Um, but it is what it is. I mean, I, I try to look on the bright side. And the bright side to this is that uh, probably no one else is willing to do this and they might, I might pick up some gems. So I actually did find this one thing yesterday uh, that I didn't buy yet, but I will buy it if it's still there. I think it, it was the only thing I found. It was basically a coffee maker and it worked, but we'll see. There it is. Mr. Coffees. So they're selling for 10 bucks, right? Check this out. I got my phone right here. I'm going to put on the, uh, that's a Gary V uh, thing, by the way. Check that out, Gary V. So I'm gonna put in my phone code, one second. Then you see you got my Pokemon Go there. There's my Amazon seller and it's very simple all you do is uh it's hard to do with one hand but put it on your side here you see this uh scanning thing right here all you got to do is scan this and you're basically looking for how much this sells for on amazon and you're looking for a at least a 50 percent return on investment so, I go to home here, right? And I hit that uh, camera button at the top. And then it does the scan for me. And you see, this one is selling for $23.99. So how do you do the math? You press the product and then it gives you this. Well, first thing you check is to make sure 
the ranking is under 250,000. This is 3,382. It's the only thing I found here that clears, um, and that means the ranking tells you if people actually buy this on Amazon. So even if you ship it, if no one buys it, then it's pointless. But this one is pretty high in rank, 3,000. So that's much above 250K, so that works. And it's selling for 23.99 plus shipping fees. So what you do from here is you you press this one here under the uh, new section, and that gets you to this like calculator thing. Um, and it looks kind of complicated, but it's actually not. So what you do is all you have to type in is the cost of purchase. In this case, I did 1050. It's 988, but I added in tax just in case. Shipping. How much do you pay for shipping? Well, it's a good rule of thumb is 50 cents per pound. So I'm just going to guesstimate here. It doesn't tell you how much this weighs, but it does look like it weighs like a, a decent deal. Maybe like, I don't know, like five pounds ish. Uh, so that's about $2.50 up here. That's what you put. I'll make it $3 just to like play it safe. And then, all you gotta do is look at the actual profit. And in this case, it's not enough. It's negative 24 cents. Why? Because the fees with FBA cost 13 bucks here. And then the price is 23.99 minus the cost I lose money on this. So, god damn it. Yesterday I came here and it was like 30 bucks. I guess like someone listed it on Amazon for cheaper since then. So, I'll have to keep looking. That just sucks. All right. Um, it is what it is. So, uh, just to give you a sense here, this is like what uh, Walmart looks like. And basically, there's no real clearance section. Uh, there are basically just like aisles at the end of basically like these sections at the end of each aisle I'm just gonna go through and scan these and hope that one of these works and I'll get back to you Alright, I found something the crock pots. So these um, You can sell them for $31.39. That's the price that Amazon put in there. Um, I was Conservative in my shipping cost by overestimating. I said it would cost $7.50 per unit because these look heavy. These are, I feel like they're about 20 pounds. So I put $7.50 for just one unit. And the net, uh, God damn it. I forgot to put in cost of purchase. So this is gonna cost about 20 bucks here. So once I put that in, we're negative by 13. Um, so darn that didn't work. I thought it had something there uh, Also, make sure you hit the Amazon fulfilled tab not the seller fulfilled tab uh, Otherwise you get different numbers All right two seconds later. I found something that works. These are some type of wooden utensils 20 bucks, right? I put this thing in here. It's about hundred thousand sales rank. So it qualifies. It's under 250,000 sales rank um, you can see that at the uh, top left here, 1,190 sales rank. Then you hit this thing here, and it gets you to the calculator. Hit Amazon Fulfilled. It gives you the low price, 36.94. Um, this thing weighs like nothing. It's like three pounds. It's like super light. So um, I put 250 um, for the shipping cost. That's about 50 cents per pound um, for shipping as a rough rule of metric. Cost of purchase, 20 bucks again, and I get a shoot. It was green before. Darn. Yeah, I'm screwing up a lot. Oh, I forgot to change it from seller fulfilled to Amazon fulfilled. If you do it on the Amazon fulfilled, the fees with FBA go up tremendously, and that just like destroys your purchase price. That just sucks. Man, I was so close too. But this is interesting. Look, it's like, it's some type of Bluetooth bamboo utensil speaker caddy. 
So, oh, the caddy is Bluetooth, but the utensils are just wooden. I think that's a bit overboard, but I guess a lot of people will want to buy this. All right, so I've been scanning stuff. Nothing has been working. I finally tried pie face and headbands. Pie face is something that the blog I've been following to learn how to do this called OnlineSellingExperiment.com. They just did a post about how they made a bunch of money just selling pie faces. I tried scanning it. It's saying it's a restricted item that you're not allowed to uh, fulfill by Amazon using. So it's just like, how are they even able to sell this on it? It's, it's telling me at least that I, I'm not allowed to. So maybe they're doing some advanced stuff here. Um, as you can see, I've been starting to resort to just scanning items that are right off the shelf that are new, not even in clearance, just to kind of get a sense. Uh, nothing has really been working. I th really thought Pie Face would, but um, yeah, not working so far. On the positive side, in here, I just bought a micro SD card. And this is like not really related to this experiment I'm doing, but basically it's a great tip on um, buying online versus in store. So basically I found this card um, on the store for a lot cheaper, like I mean online for a lot cheaper. So I asked them if they could honor the price in the store and they did. Uh, so that was great for uh, Walmart to do. Um, and so, you know, most people they know about just trying stuff in the store and then buying it online but most people don't really do in-store pickup or asking people to honor the price that they have online in-store. That's a really cheap way of getting cheaper deals. All right, after a lot of digging, I finally found my first win here. So as you can see, it's uh, $28.50 on Amazon, minus the fees by Amazon, minus the shipping costs. These things are really light, about like five pounds. So that's $2.50 shipping, um, about 50 cents per pound. And then the cost of this here is 988. I put in 1050 um, just to uh, factor in tax. That's $4.87, uh, which is around a 50% return on investment. Um, and that's what you're looking for. Uh, there's two criteria you're looking for once you find something that's in the green. Uh, you have to actually make three at least $3 per unit, which this clears. And then the second thing is it has to be at least 50% return on investment, which this just barely clears. Now, once you found something like this, which you know, it took me a while, but um, he, they told me you need to buy, you can buy up to six of them. They don't recommend buying more than six as a beginner because um, some things don't sell. Like it's no, nothing's guaranteed. Like this might be a hypothetically good product, but like maybe no one wants to buy these on Amazon, even though um, the seller rank for this one is in the clear this the seller rank for this one is actually let me put in my password real quick um it is in the clear it's under 250,000. it's 181,232, which is um it's roughly in the clear um uh, but it's still like bordering around those lines so it's technically like it's doable we're, we're hoping this will work so I, this is my first thing i'm going to try I don't know if I want to buy all six of them. I don't think, cause like if they don't sell, then I'm stuck with all these. Or well, actually, they'll be in the factory. Yeah? So I think what I'll do is I'll go for five. Plus, like one of these is like broken. Like you can, the the box isn't like working. So oh shoot, I almost dropped that one. So you can kind of tell this one's like kind of messed up. Like sure, I can kind of fix it if I wanted to, but like uh, why? So I got four of these, one, two, three, four. These are all in moderately good condition. This one's kind of dented. So technically, if all goes well, I'm supposedly gonna make 20 bucks on this thing after I ship it and everything. You know, not the best and worst deal, but um, I don't think it's supposed to be this, like it, it's not supposed to take this long and the stuff you buy doesn't always have to be so big and bulky. Um, from what I've been seeing of others do it, and again, I might try this at uh, Home Depot or somewhere that's better than here um, with more clearance stuff. Um, it should be like real quick and you should get like 20, 30 items real quickly and you ship it off and supposedly you'll make like a hundred bucks in an hour. Uh, not exactly the case here, but I haven't lost hope. I will try Home Depot in a future video, likely. 
sometimes you scan something and it doesn't even give you a number here. In this case, I just kind of skipped the item. I'm assuming it's so bad in rank that no one buys it. So that's kind of the case here. All right, that, guys, that's it. I started scanning a bunch of things that weren't even on clearance, like uh, fabric softener, laundry, crock pots, all sorts of random stuff. Um, and an attempt to just find something else that actually uh, nets a positive ROI of some sort. Uh, and I couldn't find anything other than that one thing I found, uh, which I'll be buying these four boxes of um, pretty much kitchen uh, plates and stuff like that. Uh, however, that doesn't mean I have lost hope. It just means that this Walmart is not perfect for this type of thing. They really don't have anything really on clearance. Pretty much everything is um, as you see it. Uh, so I will be uh, at least trying Home Depot, if not uh, Target and a few of the others in the future, hoping that it's much easier and um, I'll find a lot more stuff. Again, it does seem like the searching process and the searching and scanning process take up a lot of time. They said in the article that uh, you should probably scan 100 different things in clearance on your first try. I probably scanned maybe 20, 30 things at max. Um, it's just like nothing here is really on clearance. So I just started scanning regular price items. I got pretty close with the fabric softener, but I was doing the negative. I thought I got close because it was like, it costs five bucks, but they sell for 10 bucks. But then once you factor in like uh, fulfillment fees and all that other stuff, shipping costs, it doesn't work. So um, there you have it. At least, at the very least, you kind of get a real sense, a true sense of how tough or what the real process is like and the actual math behind it. It's really simple. You really only need to know the price it costs you to buy it here. Um, the price you can sell it for on Amazon, which the app gives you. And then you just have to put input the cost of shipping, which is 50 cents per pound. And it will subtract the Amazon FBA fees, which is separate. And it'll give you the final net price. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, yeah, it's rather unfortunate. I couldn't find anything else really. Um, Actually, I'm going to try it one last time with these plates here. Alright, so this is my final attempt. I doubt these plates will work because they're like freaking plastic plates. But in the rare case that maybe someone will buy it for like twice, three times the cost you can get it at Walmart. I doubt it because they're plastic plates. But you never know. Alright, here we go. So these cost 250 here, right? Scan that thing. What the fuck? It uh, doesn't even show. So it's not even listed on Amazon. So th that's a bummer. Anyhow, thanks for watching, and uh, let me know in the comments below if you are interested in seeing more stuff like this if you want to see episode two where i go to home depot um i'm very interested about this myself because i am so um i don't like shipping stuff at all so much so that i did not return um these shoes i bought from zappos because they were too tight because i thought it would be too much of a hassle to buy cardboard boxes and ship them back and uh you know drive to a post office but uh, at the end of the day, it really isn't that much work, which is why I think it's doable. So this is really my first time really shipping anything. Um, if you're curious about shipping, all you really have to do is buy some cardboard boxes from Home Depot, put these things in them, uh, tape them up, print out the uh, shipping thing, and then you're ready to go. You pay Amazon directly for the uh, postage. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, I think it is, from what I've seen so far, it's slightly more complicated than expected, but we'll see where this goes. And uh, that's it for this video. Um, of course, if you prefer reading to watching videos or you just want more details, of course, I will be posting on my blog with more numbers and details about this whole excursion. Uh, so hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you thought of this video. If you're interested in episode two, we'll see what happens. 
All right, there we go. I spent $52.37 on five sets of kitchenware. Now, basically, I bought one more. I found one more that was not broken in a random aisle. So, you know how I said I was only gonna buy four? Well, I bought five, 10 bucks each plus tax. So overall, not a horrible deal. And um, if everything goes to plan, I will make a net profit of five bucks for each of these once they are shipped to Amazon, which I'll have to package up and send. And someone buys them off Amazon and the transaction is done. So, you know, considering the time that's been put into this, uh, it's about two hours maybe, in, you know, not including the research. So this is about, you know, 1250 an hour. But to be honest, like that's only because I wasn't familiar with this process. Um, I'm assuming like if you get better at this, you'll get much faster and it'll be much easier. So it'll probably only take an hour, if not less. So 25 bucks an hour, that's not bad. Uh, considering that a lot of like, it, it, be, it definitely beats uh, boring factory, minimal wage work at Five Guys or McDonald's. You're making twice as much with um, more freedom and leisure. So it's more of a side hustle type thing. I don't think this is something that can scale to like millions of dollars. I don't think um, you can become a multimillionaire off of this, but it definitely beats some random job or being homeless. Uh, you make more money in less time. It's a great side hustle that you can scale, that you can do whenever for however long you want. I mean, I'm sure there is a cap depending on how many Walmarts and Targets are in your area. Um, but it's great for someone living in the city, uh, great for someone living in the suburbs. Um, not as much uh, anyone living in a town with a few stores. Uh, but that's what I like about this side hustle. It's like it's so it's much quicker to make money off of this than uh, Something like affiliate marketing which can take six months to two years before you get any traction or traffic Where you can maybe make some sales off of it. So it's like instant like within a couple hours Supposedly hypothetically you can start seeing real money in your bank account, which is why I really wanted to try this out There you go. I'm gonna stop talking now hit that subscribe button. See you later. All right, it is another day and we are on the last leg of my first Amazon FBA uh, shipment. And what we're doing today is going to Home Depot and we're gonna be buying cardboard boxes to ship these in. And to do that, we need to measure this. On top of this, we also will be uh, looking at the clearance aisle and uh, at uh, Home Depot to see if there's anything uh, worth uh, getting on top of this. You're supposed to buy like, a few items not just like one and we've only bought one item so far so it's kind of hard to do this one with one hand but I'm going to try and like measure this for you I just want the pretty much the well all the dimensions really the length width and height so one of them is about I put that at seven here, so seven um, inches, maybe a bit more, seven and a quarter inches. And then there's like a bit of gap space here because they're kind of bent. So I kind of want to measure two of them and see where that lies. Um, it uh, seems to be 15 on the dot, maybe a little bit more, 15 and a quarter. And then the height would be so it's about 10 and 3 quarters inches. But not the height, the, that's the length, that's the width. Um, now the height is, it's about 10 and 3 quarter inches as well. Uh, Again, this is really hard to do while I'm filming with one hand. Um, but yeah, that's uh, almost 11. I would put it at 11 inches. So it's uh, 7 and a quarter by 10 and 3 quarters and 11. And then I could probably fit two. So it's technically 15 by 7 by 11. Um, and as you can kind of see, uh, this is another day, so 
Um, I have been kind of uh, procrastinating on this challenge and I think it's just because of my uh, big fear of or not fear but like kind of fear of the hassle it will take to get this all done especially the shipping and the measuring and everything else um, I am so um, not fearful but like I just think it's so much of a hassle to ship things back that these Zappo shoes I bought that were um, a, lit, a good deal too small like not too much but so much so that um, I avoided shipping them back even though they were a bit too small because I just thought oh I have to buy a cardboard box and then I have to tape it up and then but like in reality it's just like at the end of the day what you're doing is just putting it in a cardboard box taping it up taping like the paper you print out on it and then driving it to a post office I think it's just because I think there's going to be more hassle unexpected like oh you have to you know keep inventory here and then you have to um, maybe there's like stuffing that you have to buy to stuff the empty spaces and then there's other uh, regulations and it's just this huge hassle and you have to drive there but um, I think it's mainly in my mind I think the actual steps are not too bad so that's kind of why I'm breaking it into parts so it's less intimidating and that's one of the strategies I've been using very successfully uh, to build a successful um, exercise routine and, and so on and so forth. So uh, next stop, I'm just going to go to the uh, Home Depot with this ruler and we'll, we'll see what happens. All right, I'm here at Home Depot and I'm going with the small cardboard box. I'll need three of them. Uh, two can fit in uh, each and I have five to go with. Um, this will get probably more difficult when there's more clunky items involved I'll probably have to buy like stuffing as well um, but since we have boxes like straight up boxes to go with I think we should be good to go um, I started doing a bunch of spatial calculations and assessing the other boxes um, but the medium wouldn't fit more the large would just be too big I think let's I decided not to get too complicated with it. I was like, okay, what if I change the dimensions and flip it this way and stack them this way? And just started getting complicated and it, plus it still wouldn't work. Like it'd be like 22 inches wide and only like the large and extra large can fit that. So let's just go with three of these. All right, so they actually do have a clearance section in this gigantic store. Uh, there's two of them, one down there and then one right here. So unlike Walmart, they actually have like a defined section. It's pretty small though, but there's still a lot of items you can scan. So I'm just gonna get to scanning it. You kind of know how the scanning process works, so I'm not gonna kind of repeat myself here until I find something good. Uh, I've scanned everything on both clearance shelves, which was about 70 plus items. This is the only thing that comes close and it doesn't even qualify. See, um, you got $29 at the top, 10 bucks in fees um, I'm estimating maybe um, two dollars shipping and it costs 16 bucks um, plus tax it'd be 16 maybe um, 1625 and let's just say it's not as uh, well, it's not that heavy so let's just say it cost a dollar 25 here that's only a dollar 85 profit which is less than 10 percent ROI and you have to realize that this isn't even the lowest price on there. Um, if we were to set it to match lowest price, $28.89, it comes in even lower at $1.76 profit. Now, technically, the second item on here is uh, $32-ish. So if it was that high, then the ROI, the, the profit would jump to 4 bucks, assuming it sells. But that's still like a... 20% ROI just to make four bucks on this thing, assuming it sells. If it does not sell, I don't make it. And that they told me only to get something if it's a 50% ROI or more. So technically, this would have to be eight bucks for me to even buy it. But it's the only thing that even qualifies. I've scanned everything else, and everything's either in the negative or you can't even ship it here. Or the net profit's like 50 cents and like. 
2% ROI. So I'm debating getting this thing, which I don't even know what it is. It's some type of um, electric circuit thing. Um, it's the only one that's wrapped. The others have been um, altered already and returned. Um, and I can't justify this. Um, the risk is uh, spending 16 bucks and this not selling. The potential uh, gain would be maybe two or three bucks in profit, assuming it sells for the higher price, um, which isn't even 50% ROI. So just to make three bucks, it's not worth it. And I've scanned everything else on that aisle over there and the one over there, and nothing really qualifies. Some things aren't even eligible. Uh, some things um, are just too, uh, too, too expensive here. I don't know what it is. All right, guys, so I am heading out of Home Depot. Disappointed. I bought three of these uh, cardboard boxes and that's all I bought for a grand total of three bucks. And now another thing is that you don't really factor in the cost of like cardboard dock boxes and tape. When you factor that in, your uh, return on profits gets even uh, smaller and they don't really tell you to factor that into um, your purchases because I guess it's negligent or so small. But um, I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe there's other people doing this here. Um, so they've already taken all the good stuff. Maybe I just, like I thought it was just because wa the Walmart I went to sucked. So I had high hopes that maybe this call, um, Home Depot would be better. And yes, it did have like a lot of stuff in its clearance aisle and actually like a destin designated clearance section. But as you could tell, nothing met the, met the criteria. Some of the stuff I was glad didn't meet the criteria because it was bulky, really heavy, and it would have been a pain to like carry out and ship. Um, I don't know what's going on, you know. Uh, I heard about this from a very recent podcast of the people on, from OnlineSellingExperiment.com and they were saying on the interview, uh, it's a brand new interview, they, they were saying that, oh, this market isn't saturated at all. But based off the two stores I've been to so far, the opposite has kind of held true. Um, maybe, just maybe, uh, so many people are doing it nationwide already that all the return on investment has kind of been taken out because they've already bought it and dro driven down the price online uh, by selling it for cheaper because the supply has gone up. Now, I don't really know true answer to this. Um, but it is what it is. I do have my three cardboard boxes and I'm going to uh, finish out this experiment and ship these out and see if anyone actually purchases and show you the results. Uh, and then from there, it will depend on your reaction, your response. If you want an episode two, um, I haven't completely given up hope. So I, I definitely want to see if it's just uh, bad luck. Maybe the places I've been to so far are just really bad and I'm going to hit up a target in the area. There's like maybe two targets in my area. Uh, obviously this experiment works better for people who live in condensed cities where there's like 10 targets and Walmarts. That way you can just hit them all up. And then uh, there is a Lowe's by my area that they've recommended going to as well. Uh, so uh, that's that. It is rather, I wouldn't say frustrating. Um, it, was getting a bit fun scanning all those items. Um, I think when you hit some momentum and a good portion of items are like ROI positive and like really good profit margins, I can imagine that you could get really excited doing something like this. You could be like, yeah, that thing worked. Yeah, that thing worked. Yeah, this tiny little thing that no one buys, that just made like 300 bucks for me, but that's not what happened today. I scanned everything and um, There's a lot of things that just didn't fit the bill for many different reasons Some weren't even eligible to sell some the return on investment was negative some uh, you know it was just uh, The the price was too high others 
Um, and this happened a lot. The sales ranking was super low or non-existent. They didn't even sh show a sales ranking, which meant that it wouldn't sell even if you put it up there. So that was uh, kind of bad. One tip, I, one tip for you guys if you're doing this is uh, look it up on Google if it's not showing a sales rank. First off, nine times out of 10, that means that it's not gonna sell, but sometimes it would, so you wanna double check, and then you look it up on Google and check out the Amazon reviews. If there aren't any Amazon reviews on it, not a good sign, it means the, the demand is low. So, um, I mean, I could talk about this for a while. I think one of the big things that just cuts out any uh, potential for return on investment that I've seen is basically the FBA fees. I mean, sometimes they're charging like five to six dollars per unit of FBA fees. So any potential profit is kind of wiped out from that. And it does seem like some of the things they were some of the things I scanned, they were selling for less on Amazon, even with the clearance deals here. So Amazon does kind of have a stranglehold on the market in a way. Like some of the most random things I scanned, they were selling cheaper on Amazon despite the fact that there was reviews that, that, that this was on clearance and it was selling for super cheap. Somehow, maybe it's the fact that they don't have to pay for employees or um, rent or electricity. Um, I don't know. Or maybe it's just the fact that people are already doing this and flipping it okay that's all I gotta say let's keep going all right so I've been procrastinating on doing this but after realizing that I spent the last two hours just searching for stuff to entertain myself with I realized I gotta at least get started on this so this is the last step in my um, really first Amazon FBA shipment it's been um, quite a few days since my last uh, web c video clip and uh, what we have here is basically I'm on um, the website onlinesellingexperiment.com and this is the website that I've been using um, to kind of guide me and, and teach me how to do this FBA thing now um, as I've already mentioned um, but just to re-emphasize um, I am not really finding the fun in this as much as I should and that's a sign that maybe this is not the side hustle for me uh, the fact that I am procrastinating in the first place is a sign that maybe I should try something that actually gets me excited and this did at first but then as I got closer into it just the whole idea of shipping this uh, seems like such a hassle so I've been procrastinating so sometimes I think people tons of people will email me um, through my email newsletter and they'll say I'm struggling with procrastination but that's not all really the true problem sometimes procrastination isn't something that you should solve it's a sign that you're doing the wrong thing and rather than trying to eliminate procrastination you should actually uh, try something else that's more fun uh, to make money so basically you've bought the products um, I've bought the cardboard boxes, haven't uh, assembled them. Another thing that makes this hard is that I was doing clean and jerks at my gym the other day. Uh, it is a, a powerlifting movement and I screwed it up uh, and I screwed up my whole um, wrist. I, I can't move my wrist without it hurting, even slightly. So I don't know how I'm going to even record this, let alone uh, get this really to work. Um, but I'm trying my best here. So what, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to kind of read through this and then uh, do it with you. That'll kind of make it more fun for me. So um, first you go to Amazon and you find the actual listing of the product. And then you look for that button on the bottom right that says sell on Amazon. So why don't we do that first? So let's go over to the boxes of products I have. Uh, I have them right here, and they are called 23-piece prep and store kitchen set. So you probably can't even see them with this lighting, but they are 23-piece prep and store kitchen set. So because I only have one hand here, 
I'm going to try my best to angle the camera so that you can kind of see the screen. Can you see the screen? Uh, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Uh, okay. I'm going to type it in and then move the camera. So I'm going to go into Amazon.com. And then on the search, I'm going to type in 23 prep and store. Oh, okay, so prep store is already populating. Prep and store kitchen. So there it is. There it is. Uh, the f so I typed in 23 prep and store kitchen. Um, Nothing that auto suggested made sense, but I did find this thing here, and I believe this is the correct one. So there you have it. It's fourteen ninety nine, which is not good because that's the price I bought it for. It was it was displaying a higher price on the app when I scanned it. So that's not a good sign. But I know it's this one because of the red covers and all the things in it. So I'm going to click into this, and honestly, I, I still don't think this is a bad deal. Like, that's a lot of stuff you get for just 15 bucks. Uh, you get a mixing bowl, you get um, a smaller and bigger metal bowls, one with holes in it, uh, measuring cups. Again, I'm not a uh, kitchen aficionado, so I'm not really sure what those things are. But there is the button, sell on Amazon. All right, so the next step is um, you basically just enter your information. Uh, so I, basically they're telling you on the next screen, you, um, what do you do? I will enter in the information about the product. So you basically put your price and then the quantity that you have available. And then I will select, I want Amazon to ship this item and click continue. So I will do that. I'm sorry I can't really position this so you can see the screen while I type it because my hand is screwed up. This is the best, probably the best I can do for now. You probably can't see anything, but it's better than nothing. All right, so it's pretty simple. I hit new, and then I hit quantity of five. I chose $32 here instead of the low price $20 because um, another article on that website told me to choose um, one cent lower than the highest price on the used options if you have time and you're willing to wait. They say you only kind of want to match the low price or go, you know, a penny higher than the lowest price if you really have to sell it quickly because that typically creates a bidding war and then that just destroys the price of the product and you you can barely sell it for anything. So then I, I chose $32. I hope that's the right place to put that number in. And then I said I want Amazon to ship this for me. So now I'm going to hit the calculate fees button and after hitting the calculate fees button it is telling me that it's going to cost me $5.79 plus FBA fees so which I guess I'm good with 
submit your listing and create shipment. So I'm going to hit that button that says submit your listing and create shipment. And it is taking me it is taking me to a login page for uh, Amazon fulfillment fulfillment by Amazon. So I'll click I have read uh, terms and service and then the button. Okay, so I think they kind of screwed it up by taking me to this weird page. They just redirected me again to, I guess, an Amazon FBA's sign-in page. So that wasn't part of the article, which is strange. I guess I'll have to sign in. So I clicked the sign in button and then it brought me to this page on another tab and this page I already I'm already signed in under. So that's a bit odd. Uh, I know I already have an account and I'm signed in but now I have do I have to redo the whole process? Alright, so I'm redoing the whole process from here, making sure I'm signed in under an Amazon account on this page, and then just trying the whole thing again. All right, I did the same thing again, and this time it brought me to this page, which looks better. And it's asking me if I should accept a label service. Now the problem with this is that they didn't say anything about label service. Instead, this article, which they claim has been updated, uh, brought, says you're supposed to be brought to this page, which shows your address, um, and then just kind of verifies, I guess, uh, I guess where it's shipped to or whatever. And then you have two options for packing type, individual or case. And case products is used when multiple items are being sent in the original manufacturer's case, which is rarely the case. So choose individual product. Yeah, I don't even see where that's this. Oh, it's right there. I think these pictures are outdated because look at this. This doesn't... S oh, I guess I have to accept the label service first. I'm assuming you accept it. Okay, so I hit I accept label service. And now it takes me to this page. I have to choose the barcode type. Should I choose to meet this requirement, you can either use eligible manufacturer barcodes or print Amazon barcodes from your seller account 
and apply them yourself. If you choose to use the manufacturer barcodes when customers purchase a product from you, Amazon can send that item that is closest to them, even if you didn't send it to the fulfillment center. When that happens, you get credit for the sale and we transfer an item from your inventory to blah, 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 blah. In addition, if you use the manufacturer barcode, you don't have to apply a, even though inventory track user, blah, 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 blah. oh my goodness. You know, I have no idea what to choose here. Um, manufacturer barcode seem like less work, so let's go ahead and hit that one. At this point, you know, I'm just gonna, my goal is to just get these shipped in out of my room, uh, not even to make a profit from this. So this makes sense. This uh, individual, okay, so I have to add an address here. So I will go ahead and do that. Alrighty, now I'm on the page that looks just like the page in the article at the top here. Uh, so, um, well, it was this one, except now they added images next to individual and case pack page. I added my address, which got me to this one, send slash replenish. So, I... Let me read this. I have the option of creating a new shipment or adding to an existing shipment. I want to send these items in the same shipment, so I add so add to an existing sh shipment. I will click that uh, button, and that will give me a drop down to select the shipment to add these items to. I don't have an existing shipment. Plus, I don't even see that option on here. It just says like, okay, so I'm just hitting continue to go through these. Yet, the thing is, it's not even displaying what I should do next. It's just saying like, you can hit continue. And it's pretty much giving me like, a lot of confusing numbers that I don't even understand. Um, Basically, here it is, it's saying like, ship to these addresses, Kent WA, and I have two things to ship. Like, I have no idea what this means. How does it know that four of an item won't, will fit in one box and five won't? And then I, the last option is to just approve shipment, and I'm good to go. I have to, I really have to think about this. Like this article is just not helping much. Um, so basically, let me read this. It says, "Now I have the option of creating a new shipment or adding to exist." Okay, so he had an existing shipment somehow. I select the plan that I have already created, and okay, so. I have been putting this off for a couple weeks now, uh, saying that I have to you know, spend time with family for the holidays, but that's only true until a certain point. 
sometimes your family gets sick of you and there's no more excuses so I have the boxes over there and then the bigger boxes I'll be shipping them in I have the tape ready the scissors ready so I'm just going to record myself uh, putting this all together I think one of the biggest uh, mistakes people make here uh, is that uh, let me see if I can prop this up a bit people just don't get to stuff that they said they will get to the tape I'm just going to put the shipping label on top. Um, basically, you just print out the shipping label, you pay for it online, and that covers the postage. So you don't have to go and buy stamps. But that's an extra additional cost. It's a few bucks extra. So that also cuts into the uh, cost for this that you have to account for. It's more pricey depending on how heavy the box is. And I guesstimated how much, how heavy this box is based off the Amazon weight. So that's one box in the can. We have two more boxes to go. Now this is a sign that I probably am not passionate enough about this to continue. I've already mentioned that numerous times before, but the fact that I've been procrastinating, I should be jumping out of bed to do any type of side hustle. If it's not, if it's uh, such a big chore that I procrastinate for weeks, it's not a matter of defeating the procrastination. It means I don't enjoy this enough to do this. So, not a good sign. That's something you should look for when you're testing out side hustles. So now I'm going to start the second box. Uh, that was the first box and it went well. Um, here's a little, here's what the shipping kind of looks like. Give you a sense. This is what the shipping label kind of looks like. You just kind of print it out online um, using that Amazon interface. So now, I thought this would be a hassle to assemble, but it's actually pretty simple. 
you just kind of uh, see if I prop this up so you can see. You just kind of open it like this, and then from the bottom, you just kind of pull it together, and boom, it's assembled. Same thing with the top. Not a big a hassle as I thought it'd be. I think one of the problems with with stuff like this is I built it up in my head to be a lot more, much more of a hassle than it is. Having said that, this is still a bit too much of a hassle for my liking, so I probably won't continue it in the future. Just the whole idea of having inventory in my room and uh, getting it done. Now, most of you guys out there would have quit or procrastinated indefinitely until the end of time. So how exactly was I able to continue and not let this, you know, stay there? Well, one way was I broke it into tiny, tiny parts. So even though I procrastinated for a couple weeks on each set of this, I broke each segment into tiny little parts so that I couldn't continue procrastinating indefinitely. For example, one day, I told myself all I have to do today is print out the shipping labels. And that's what I did. I printed, I, uh, printed out the shipping labels to coverage the postage of this. Another day, all I did was... What did I do? Um, get scotch tape which I have here and scissors I didn't have to do anything else I just needed to get the supplies ready and that's what I did and then the third day all I had to do was assemble one box just one box get it taped up and ready and that's what I did so I basically broke it into tiny parts so that it was so simple that I couldn't help but not do it. Now, I think these procrastination solving tactics, these procrastination hacks you could call them, they're useful but I think they're short-sighted. Uh, a lot of people look for procrastination solving tactics but the issue is that they're still doing something, they're not passionate or uh, they find enjoyable or fun. So you can use these forever, but you're still going to be failing and being pretty inefficient because you you don't enjoy it. So you're still going to put it off and these will only somewhat solve your problems. And I learned that the hard way. How did I learn that the hard way? Well, I used to want to go, uh, want to get into med school and so I did a bunch of stuff um, to try and solve my procrastination towards studying for the MCATs all the way up until I finally took the MCATs and I didn't score well on the MCATs and you know I used to think to myself oh it's because of this or that it's because there's too much distractions or you know I wasn't focused enough or I wasn't disciplined enough but the truth was well I just wasn't passionate enough in it and it took me years and years all the way until I applied and took the MCATs you know that late into my college career college life not career until I realized you know what the truth is I was lying to myself I was trying to convince myself I was passionate about you know going to med school when I wasn't because I was so set on it that I thought that there's no other options and you know it was too late to switch so I was so deep in the game and a lot of Asian Americans do this their parents convinced them so well that they have to go to med school that they convince themselves that they're passionate about it and they make it their only choice and that they burn all the other bridges or possibilities in their mind 
uh, that they convince themselves that, that it's their passion when it's clearly not based off their folk lack of focus and so on and so forth so that's something you got to keep in mind you can trick yourself into what you think you're passionate about here we go putting this in here here's another one luckily they fit perfectly two per box um, another reason why I don't think I will continue this side hustle on top of the fact that inventory space is just such a hassle to deal with like I hate having a mess of random stuff in my room or anywhere in sight it just makes you look disorganized like I would tolerate it if I was making like six figures with little to no effort or moderate effort from this but when you're making like an extra 10 to 15 bucks an hour max if you're if you get lucky and find the right inventory for this it's just not worth you know keeping your room so messy with just this inventory and for me it was just like five boxes imagine if you know i was i actually found some other good stuff like all the other amazon fba people and there was all sorts of crazy piles of crazy stuff in my room like um you know gravy mixers and random assortments of uh board games and electronics and coffee mugs and uh random stuff it just wouldn't look good plus it'd be such a hassle to pack I got lucky that these were already boxed up. Imagine if these were like gravy mixer bowls and stuff like that, that weren't packaged in boxes to begin with. So I could just easily package them into other boxes. Imagine if this still had space in it. Um, another extra cost that they don't really tell you to account for is the um, filler uh, stuff that you put into boxes so that they don't get damaged inside when there's empty space. I think they call it like, um, what do they call it? I think they call it um, stuffing or something, like box stuffing. You have to buy that at the store. I saw it in one of their um, online selling experiment.com's um, articles. They casually mention it, but that's another cost that you don't account for. And then, like, if you want to get advanced at this, there's other costs that speed up the process, like, um, but are still costs. Like, there's devices you can get to remove um, clearance items, or clearance stickers, so it looks more presentable to the end user. Then there's devices to kind of, like, make taping it easier and so on and so forth so they're like technically investments um, so technically they're not that big of a deal I don't want to seem like I'm complaining or um, making this out to be something that's such a big hassle that it's not worth it I've just found that in I'm just kinda trying to report on the truth behind this based off my experience in my area perhaps in your area this could be a miracle. It could be a lot easier. Um, I'm just seeing this being a lot tougher if it was a bunch of random stuff and then I have to kind of shove them into a box. Luckily, this kind of worked out seamlessly simply because um, I guess it's just kind of how how the boxes were, dimensions worked. They just fit normally. But imagine if there's all these gravy bowls and stuff in here. Uh, this is kind of how it looks. I'm not going to show the address for obvious privacy reasons. But um, yeah, you just kind of print this thing out and tape it onto the front. Or at least that's what I think you're supposed to do. Um, but yeah, one more box to go. Uh, this is honestly not hard at all. But I can see how this could be harder. Yeah, 
different strokes for different folks. For some people, it's the perfect side hustle. For others, it's not. And that's why I think the best thing you should do is try out different side hustles. There's a new website and podcast that came out called Side Hustle, uh, SideHustleSchool.com. And there's a counterpart book to it called Side Hustle. The author and host of the book and podcast is someone called Chris Gillibo. He's written a lot of books, including The $100 Startup. And he's really been pioneering this whole side hustle movement. And I highly recommend you check him out for other side hustle ideas. I think what he's doing is very innovative. Um, his book's all right. It's brand new. It just came out. But what I recommend, uh, which is free, is you check out his podcast, which you can um, listen to for free on Apple Podcasts on your phone. And what makes it so innovative is the fact that he has like hundreds of guests come on who have all these unique side hustles. And this guy, he has a huge following, hundreds of thousands, and tens of thousands of stories of successful side hustles, and he just cherry picks the most unique, weird, innovative, cool, uh, creative side hustles that are profitable with uh, little work or, you know, solve people's life goals. You know, some people want to still have a nine to five while doing a side hustle. Others want to completely quit their jobs and he just kind of documents these and has these guests on um, who are part of their follow his following and have successfully done it so you have all sorts of like really interesting stories and it's just a very cool way to get ideas for side hustle there's all sorts of random stuff he's posted on there like um, a lady who's like making like 1500 bucks a month like um, I think selling dinosaur toys or something weird, weird stuff like that. Uh, so check it out, SideHustleSchool.com. I'm not affiliated with Chris Gillibo or that, but I think it would be a great resource for any of you guys interested in a side hustle, but don't want to do FBA. Um, so there's that. For this final box, I only have one box to put in here, so there will be empty space. However, you know, I don't feel like buying. I, this is probably not within the proper way of doing it, but I don't feel like buying stuffing and getting another cost in there to, uh, to stuff this box with so it's full. So it's just going in as one unit on its own. And I'm going to go ahead and tape this up. Now the scissors and the scotch tape I got for free from my parents' place. But So just keep that in mind. Perhaps you can borrow some of this, which will reduce expenses. Um, and Pat Flynn of SmartPassiveIncome.com. He's a huge guy in the online business space. He's another guy I recommend you follow. 99% uh, of his stuff is free and it's incredibly useful. Um, ooh, I did not envision this. So I just ran out of tape. That's it, there's no more tape and I still need some more tape to get this done. So that's a problem, but uh, I'll, do, I'll make do with what I can. Uh, as I was saying, Pat Flynn of SmartPassiveIncome.com, he is the person who uh, made me aware of OnlineSellingExperiment.com and um, what Pat Flynn does is incredibly awesome. He teaches others how to start online businesses and he has a business online just uh, teaching others and uh, making money by selling courses, ebooks, and affiliate um, and sponsorships and affiliate deals. And basically, um, he makes net six figures a, 
a month. So that's around two million a year net, not gross. So that's actually money in his pocket. And he's very famous in this field. Um, highly honorable and ethical and honest guy, which is what I like about him. So check him out if you want even more ideas. Um, but uh, here's uh, kind of a sense of what the end products look like from afar. Boom. And so I will still need tape to uh, tape this last one up. But these two I will ship out now. Uh, I'm going to drop them off at the United States Post Office. I think that's where they should go. And um, that's it from there. We will basically just check. All I have to do now is wait for them to be shipped and received and then I'll check my Amazon store so that so I'm alerted when they are received and then just wait for them to sell online and I could also kind of tweak the price if they're not selling fast enough or they're not selling at all and make it cheaper. Oh yeah, I have to finish up my story with Pat Flynn. So Pat Flynn of Smart Passive Income, he interviewed uh, these guys from Online Selling Experiment and they explained their whole process of FBA, which is how I found out about it. And then um, with FBA, the issue with it um, is what you've kind of experienced through my video, uh, had a hard time finding stuff, not as many Walmarts or Targets as someone in a city. And then on top of that, um, you know, all those other added expensive eat up at the profit of the one thing that I found that might work. Um, but we'll see what happens. Uh, and however, Pat Flynn, he went ahead and spent about 200 bucks at his uh, target and it worked perfectly for him. He says, uh, you know, he bought a bunch of stuff like gravy bowl mixers and he packed it up, shipped it to Amazon. And um, within a very a few weeks, a couple weeks he had already broke even on it which means he had made enough net profit so that he had made up the cost that it cost him to pay for all this stuff then he says he was going to report back on if he made any extra income from that but he never did um, he runs a business so he got busy um, but for him at least he made up the money he invested and it, for him it seemed to be pretty quick and painless for me, on the other hand, a little bit more work. Um, I was also shopping at Sam's Club today and just kind of wondered, did anyone uh, ever bother to do it at Sam's Club where you can now get a bunch of random stuff like um, kitchen supplies in boxes and TurboTax and all sorts of random stuff for cheap because it's you know selling in bulk there. I wonder if uh, anyone's ever scanned anything there. Uh, having said that, you know, the signs are there. This is not the side hustle for me. It's a bit of a pain in the butt to do. But w w I want to at least finish it up. That's another way I'm trying to stay accountable um, is by making this video, make, which makes it more fun and makes me accountable to you guys who have been asking about this. All right, here I am at the U.S. Postal Service. Honestly, I've never really been in that building save for once but my parents used to come here all the time just to like drop off mail and to mail relatives but that was back in the day that was when I was really young now they've stopped coming I think it's just the digital age the internet came along and then came email and you know Facebook chat and there's no real need to be here anymore at least that's what I assume but there's actually a good amount of cars here which is um, surprising I'm hoping it's not too busy in there um, from my childhood memories there were lines of people outside even on weekdays um, I'm just going to hope uh, it's not a long line but it might be I'm going to drop these boxes off one at a time because uh, I injured my wrist doing a clean and jerk at CrossFit and I don't want to put pressure on it so I'm just gonna do it one at a time out of respect for the people in there Sometimes they don't like some stranger recording them. So I may not be able to record myself dropping off the box, but I'm just going to go in there at, in the counter and I envision me just being like, I'm just, going to just, I'm just here to drop these off and they'll be like, okay, and they'll take them and put them on some conveyor belt or something and off we go. But maybe there's a whole protocol behind it. So I'm going to bring my ID and my wallet just in case.
Well, turns out I went to the wrong place. This is UPSP, USPS, United States Postal Service, but I'm supposed to go to UPS, which is a different place. And then there's a third place called FedEx. So I basically walked up to the counter, waited in line for about 10 minutes, um, and then all the clerk said was, this is UPS. And I'm like, is that a different place? And she's like, yep, go to UPS. And I was like, okay. And she was like, next. And so I kind of figured it's a different place, it's a different organization. So turns out I went to the wrong place. We'll see what happens. Let's see where UPS is. All right, I lucked out. Uh, put the UPS store into my GPS and found it. It was only like a mile away. I thought I was gonna to have to drive like 10, 20 minutes to find one. And this one looks less crowded. So we'll go in there and see what happens. All right, so that place was a lot more friendly and better than the USPS place. Having said that, the USPS place wasn't too bad either, except for the line. Uh, no one was there except me. Just to give you some context, it was it's 5 p.m. on a Friday. Um, I dropped them off. Pretty standard stuff. Um, as soon as I dropped my first package off, there was a nice Asian man there greeting me. And immediately, instantly, he was like, uh, I, I first I said, this is my first time. And immediately he said, ah, and I see that you are selling something too. So you could tell he was experienced and he knew I, for some reason I was selling something using Amazon FBA, probably because it was printed on the label, the shipping label. And I was a little nervous that maybe I did something wrong. I didn't, didn't tape it right, or I still had to pay for uh, postage somehow, but nope. He just uh, put it on the weighing machine and he scanned it. And then two seconds later, he gave me a receipt, which looks kind of like a shipping label because it's printed on a sticky label, but he gave it to me and I'm like, I took it. And then I told him I have another box in the trunk and uh, I took that, gave it to him, same type of deal. Um, and yeah, I it was pretty cool because after he noticed, after he said, um, I noticed you're selling something too. I was like, yeah, uh, in a kind way. I wasn't like, yeah, but I was like, yeah, yeah. Like in a just like nonchalant way. And he said, good for you, good for you. So um, I like that whole positive attitude he had where he was like, good for you for, you know, taking the extra initiative, the hustle to, you know, sell something as a, as a side hustle. Um, I could kind of tell that he knew that I was doing some sort of side hustle. Um, or selling something so that was pretty cool um, he gave me the two receipts which I guess I can keep I might just throw away it says here on the receipt that it's good to save for your records but mm, um, and he also gave me all these things for free uh, they're just like white package sticky labels transparent labels and the, he basically explained to me that in the future when I tape the labels on the top of a box he could tell I was new I told him I was new at this he says in the future make sure there's no air under the labels there's a bit of air under the labels and that makes the label stick out and what happens is when these when this box is put under other boxes or thrown around, that label could get scratched off because there's um, air under there which made it stick out. So he gave me these uh, things for free, he said Merry Christmas, kind of jokingly, and I took it and I said thanks. Um, and so that was pretty cool of him to do. Uh, and just look at all these cars packed up behind me. You can kind of tell it's, uh, it's uh, rush hour time. But um, basically, that was it. Uh, quite plain, painless, uh, a lot less painless than I thought it would be. Uh, will I do it again? Probably not. Here's, here's the challenge I have for you. If this video gets 50 likes and I get comments or, you know, uh, emails on my email newsletter, or people telling me that I do a part two, 
then I will do a part two and a part three. Uh, in the part two, that will be the one where I kind of reveal if I actually made any money from this. Will anyone actually buy these kitchen supplies? I only bought one item, which was these kitchen supplies. They told you, they told me I should buy four or five to diversify and increase my chances that someone will buy something, but I couldn't find anything else. Um, but let me know if you want to see a part two and a part three. In part three, I will go to the last remaining Walmart and Target and maybe a big box store like Lowe's and see if I there's anything else I could scan that will actually turn profitable. Let me know. Um, because otherwise, I don't really want to do this. It, it's, I mean, I kind of do. I kind of want to at least scan things. Maybe I won't buy anything, but just get a sense to see if, if I did buy anything else, if I did go out and, you know, exhaust the other stores in my area, will there actually be any profits whatsoever? Or is this just a bad place to do it? Or it's just not as profitable as they make it out to be? For what I've done so far, it probably, if I had to roughly estimate, it took about six to seven hours total from the purchasing of the cardboard to Home Depot, to Walmart, to Target, to the whole, um, you know, researching of how to do all this. And then all those clicks on the computers. At the end of the day, all I really did was scan some stuff at some stores, buy something, buy a cardboard box, assemble the cardboard box, tape it up, click some things on the computer, swipe my credit card a few times, and then tape up the box, and then drive here and drop it off. But there's a lot, as you can tell from this video, there's a lot of subtle details within that that I had to do. So it's a pro, there's pros and cons to all this. It's more than it seems. And of course, if I get better at this, it'll probably take half the time or a quarter of the time because I won't have to research and read all those articles on onlinesellingexperiment.com on how to do all the steps anymore because I understand how to do it. Um, and I have other equipment like this um, transparent packing tape which I could put on top of labels to squeeze out the air to make it more efficient or whatever. Um, but do I want to do this? Probably not. Maybe I'll just throw away all this stuff um, I will definitely probably 90% chance move on to another side hustle. But if you want to see what happens next, if you want to get an update when I post a new video on this, subscribe to my YouTube channel and slash or join my VIP free email newsletter at willyoulaugh.com. If you go to that site, there's plenty of email opt-in forms where you could just join my email newsletter and I'll let you know when I post a video or article updating you on if I actually made any money, if anyone actually bought this stuff on Amazon from me using FBA. Will they? Will they not? I don't know. But um, I'm going to stop ranting here and uh, let you guys decide what happens next. There's a 99% chance I will move on to a... Uh, another side hustle that I enjoy more like um, freelancing freelancing something but um, on the flip side I want to at least see what happens if I were to continue this so if you're interested let me know